Hello, I'm Atuba George. Now, today is Friday. Praise God. And all week we've been teaching on forgiveness, drawing from our series, Life Lessons from the Bible. Let's pray. Father, in the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Oh, Lord, you've been teaching us a lot this week. Thank you. Your word is sweet in our hearts. And as we apply it, we see results working in our lives. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ. Amen. Praise God. So we're dealing with forgiveness. And I told you yesterday, we're, I'm, I'm teaching you how to live in forgiveness. You see, because sometimes people don't understand it. You, you think, oh, forgive. Okay, you put in your place too. You're being harmed. You're being hurt every day. And you think, eh, God said I should forgive. Now what can I do? No, I'm teaching how to live in forgiveness. So I told you something the other day. Forgive quickly. In other words, don't hold things against people. But before you can allow people to be in a place where they can hurt you again, you must see genuine repentance from them. Now we learn this from Joseph himself. Now Joseph, when he recognized during the years of famine, his brethren had come to Egypt to look for food and he recognized them. Why didn't he forget them? He never forgot them. He never. That's the day that they were always in his heart. Now that's why I told you, he didn't go back home because the Lord commanded him not to go. So the moment he saw his brethren, he recognized them immediately. He said, ah, that's Judas. That's Reuben. Yeah. Hey, that's true. That's Dan. He recognized them. But he hid himself. They didn't recognize him. See, they didn't recognize him. Because they had forgotten about him. <laughs> you know how it is. You know, you know, you know, this is true. If you have a friend that you had gone to elementary school with, and, and you, you are just fond of that person. Now, you may not have seen yourself for many years, but you'd never forgot them. You know, sometimes you're talking, about, ah, I remember one friend I had. He's my best friend in school. His name was John. I ah, mean, it's been 10 years now since I saw John. The day you see John, you're like, ah, John! You recognize him instantly. Why? You see, now, maybe you've not seen, in, in 10 years, in, in 20 years, people will change. You understand what I'm talking about? But because that person has been in your heart, the moment you see the person, there will be a click, you will recognize the person. But there are some of your classmates that you are, were in class together, and you'll see the person, this face is looking familiar. The face is looking familiar. Maybe. And the person's like, hey, it's me. Who? You? You know, elementary school. Oh, yes, I was saying it. <laughs> you see? So, so, Joseph recognized his brothers immediately because they were always in his heart. But they didn't recognize him at all because they had forgotten about him. To them, maybe he's even dead. He's gone. Praise <laughs> God. So what did Joseph do? Joseph, first of all, put them through the test to see if their heart was still the same way it was back then that made them to sell him. He put them through the test. First of all, he tested them to see if they would steal and tell lies. They should know that they were honest people now. You know when he told them to add, put their money back? And then they went, grown-up men now. And then he came back the next day and said, Sir, we're sorry. Um, it seems there was a mistake somewhere. When we got back home, we noticed our money. Oh, really? You mean they didn't conspire along the way to hide that money and just come? See, because they would have just come back and to buy food normally. You know, like, mm, let's just buy food. Then Joseph would have known these guys are still rogues. So I'll just give them food, return their money always. But you see, that's all it's going to be. You must learn this also. You see, unforgiveness would have made Joseph arrest them the moment he saw them. That's what unforgiveness would do. But because Joseph had forgiven them, he made things easier for them when they came without revealing himself. But in doing so, he put them to test. 
You see, because the ultimate in forgiveness is truly bringing that person again to that place of, um, of trust that you had with that person. But you don't do that simply because you say, I have forgiven the person. No. The person must gain that trust. Now, that doesn't necessarily mean putting the, putting, making life difficult for the person. It just simply means checking, testing the person's, testing the person's attitude. So Joseph tested that. Next thing, Joseph said, okay, I know the ultimate test. Well, they, you see, they, they, they sold me and they were able to live with it. Let me take one of their own now and see how they will respond to it. So he took Benjamin. He said, this one, I'm going to seize him. I'm going to seize one of you until you bring that last one. He said, see, our father. Then they begged. He saw how they begged. And they confessed with their mouth. He said, see, we have done. Let's be truthful to you. We've not been good guys. Something happened before. We lost our brother and we, we, we feel sad, so terrible about it. Oh, Joseph saw that they have, they, they have realized their mistakes. And then he realized, I think these guys, they've learned. On their own. You see, sometimes we think, and that's one thing you must learn when you're forgiving people. You don't, you see, sometimes you think because you, okay, I forgive you. You go to the person and say, you know what you did to me? I've decided to forgive you. Now, let me tell you something. You finish one, one hour lecture with the person and you think that is enough to change the person? It may just not be. The person will go, oh, I'm so sorry. I'm so sorry. But give them the same opportunity, they will do worse. So you must learn, not because you taught it. You must put them aside and watch. And sometimes you put them to test. To see how well they respond in situations like that before you can trust them. Now, those are things you learn in life. See, if not, you will put yourself, you know, you, this person hurt you five years ago and you forgave the person, and now the person wants to come back into your life. You know, sometimes even in relationships. Oh, there was this guy who was my first boyfriend. Oh, but he did, he did terrible things to me. And we, we broke, we, we, we went our separate ways. And then, well, I forgive him, shall but And then five years down the line, he comes back and says, look, I've realized you're the only woman that I can ever live with. Oh, I've, I've been to hell and back. I've done this, I've done that. You don't sit down there and be thinking, oh, cool, I'm the queen. You know, I'm, I, I knew I was going to come back. Be careful. Be careful. Before you give, yes, you've forgiven him. You shouldn't hold things against him for that long. Don't say, hmm, if he had not come, I would not have forgiven. No, no, no. You should forgive immediately for your own self, for your own good. And then when the person comes back, he said, okay, all right, let's see how things go. You put the person to test. All those ways the person hurts you before, find a way to put the person in that same environment and see how the person is going to react. Now, this is for your good. You see how the person is going to react independently without knowing. You don't tell the person, eh, but I have to test you first. Test me with anything. Test me. You know how people talk, test me with anything. I'm ready. Okay. No, no, no. You watch. You watch, you pray about it, say, Lord, you think I should let this person back in? If you are feeling the urge to do so, you, the Lord will give you, the Lord will help you. Because that's the process. That's the process. I pray the Lord brings understanding to you in all these things that I'm sharing with you. One more example I want to show to you is Philemon, book of Philemon. Let's quickly go there. We have a little time. But I want to show you something. Philemon chapter, it has just one chapter. Praise God. Quickly, let's, let's look at something there. Now, this was Paul. I want, to give you, I want to give you the background story of this book. Paul had been in prison. And he met this young man in prison. And while preaching to the young man, and the guy got born again in prison. And, hey, why are you here? 
Oh, I, I stole from my boss. So he got me locked up. I was really dishonest to him. So he got me locked up. See, so Philemon um, was sent to prison. Verse 10. Now, Philemon had sent his boy, whose name, whose name was Onis uh, I mean, Onesimus. Yeah, that's his name. <laughs> he had sent his boy to prison. So Paul was now writing to Philemon and telling him that, oh, this guy, let me read, let me read a few verses. Good. Verse 10. I appeal to you for my son Onesimus, whom I have begotten while in chains, who once was unprofitable to you, but now is profitable to you and to me. I am sending him back. You therefore receive him, that is my own heart, whom I wish to keep with me, that on your behalf he might minister to me in my chains for the gospel. But without your consent, I wanted to do nothing, that your good deed might not be by compulsion, as it were, but voluntary. For perhaps he departed for a while for this purpose, that you might receive him forever, no longer as a slave, but more than a slave, a beloved brother, especially to me, but how much more to you, both in the flesh and in the Lord. If then you count me as a partner, receive him as you would me. But if he, is, if, but if he has wronged you or owes anything, put that on my account. I, Paul, am writing with my own hands. I will repay. Not to mention to you that you owe me even your own self beside. Praise God. So Paul met Onesimus in prison and got him born again. And then now he learns that Onesimus was a servant to his friend and partner whom Paul had preached to and taught a lot of things, who believed in Paul. And so when he learned, I said, wow. Now, Paul, I want you to learn this. Paul would have taken Onesimus. Oh, look, you know what? You'll be my disciple now. But he knew that there was something that needs to be sorted out in the young man's life. And what is that? He needs to put him in a position to forgive and to receive forgiveness. So while Paul was dealing with Philemon to forgive, he was also dealing with Onesimus to receive forgiveness. So what did Paul do? Paul had to write a recommendation letter to Philemon. And he, he was trying to tell him, oh, how, how Onesimus has been, has his life has transformed to the point that Paul said, look, man, I would have loved to keep him to myself. But see, I'm not going to do that without your consent. Now, that's what we do as ministers. You see, you know, sometimes someone lets someone go and they come to you and their life is transformed. It's because sometimes you just find yourself that you, you can't change everybody. You see some people's life, but this particular one, it may not have been given to you. So now this person goes elsewhere and his life is transformed. But then he, he realizes he has hurt you. So he wants to come back to say, oh, I'm sorry. He must learn to open that door. Now that's what Paul was appealing to Philemon. He said, my brother Philemon, you've got to open that door for him. Give him that chance. You understand? So Paul was pushing Philemon to the place of forgiveness. Now, this is how forgiveness operates. Because if you don't flow with it, you are going to be holding your life backwards. It doesn't matter who hurts you. It doesn't matter what the person did to you. You owe yourself forgiveness. And then when you learn to live in forgiveness, putting all these things I have taught you now, when you learn to live in forgiveness, guess what? You'll be able to boldly speak like Joseph did. You meant it for evil, but God meant it for good. And God used you to send me ahead of you to save your life. Praise God. 
And I'm telling you the truth. If you've been hurt before, listen to me. Let it go. Let it go. And I'll tell you what's going to happen. God's going to raise you up. And this is going to happen. He's going to raise you up to that place where you will be in charge of helping and saving those people that have hurt you. And when they come, what do you do? Act like Joseph did. Forgive them. Give them space. But before you can let them into that place in your life where they will have the power to hurt you again, put them to test. And make sure they have repented and you see the genuity of their repentance. Listen, have a wonderful weekend. And I pray for you that the Spirit of God will guide you through this weekend. And bring healing and strength to your body. I pray that every need that is showing up this weekend, the Lord will open your eyes to see the provision He has already made. In the name of the Lord Jesus Christ, Amen. Have a great weekend. I'll see you on Monday. Bye-bye.